2016 has been a year of resistance from the people against anti-people, anti-farmer and anti-student policies of this government. Here are a few struggles from different sections in the last one year. Since assuming power in 2014, NDA government has consistently cracked down on the freedom of universities and the right to dissent of students. Among its targets was the Hyderabad Central University. The Modi government put pressure on HCU to ensure strict punishment for activists from a Dalit organization. Rohit Vemila was among the five research scholars who were suspended by the university in August last year and also one of the accused in the case of assault on a student leader. He committed suicide after he was kicked out of his hostel, his stipend frozen and was harassed outrightly. After this atrocity carried out by the university, protests erupted spontaneously across the country. The 18th convocation of University of Hyderabad witnessed a rare happening when Sunkanna Velpulla, a PhD holder of the varsity, refused to receive the degree from Vice Chancellor P. Apparao. The gesture was made in solidarity with Rohit Vemila. Later that year, JNU Students Union President Kanhaiya Kumar was arrested on sedition charges after allegations of anti national sloganeering against him surfaced. He was ordered to three days of police custody. Massive protests and marches were held to demand the charges to be dropped. On July 11, 2016, four young Dalits were publicly flogged and paraded around in Una in broad daylight for skinning a dead cow. The most inhuman kind of torture has been meted out to people on the pretext of cow protection and the perpetrators in their bravado have uploaded the brutal attacks on social media with impunity. Vigilante Hindutva groups acting in the name of cow protection clearly had no idea what they were getting into. Their actions sparked widespread protests in the state which transformed into a movement for Dalit rights. It also led to the formation of the Una Dalit Atyachal Ladat Samiti to seek justice for the victims of the brutal attack in Una. In late 2015 and early 2016, observers of Kashmir reported growth in homegrown militancy and radicalization of the Kashmiri population. After the news of Burhan Wani's death spread, protests erupted in some areas of Kashmir Valley. Curfew-like restrictions were imposed in some places in South Kashmir during the night and internet services in many areas were cut. Over 11,000 people, including more than 7,000 civilians, have been injured in the unrest. Indian security forces have used pellet guns, which although billed as non-lethal, led to a high number of casualties, including permanent eye injuries. In July, the Jammu and Kashmir government imposed a press emergency. The police raided the newspaper installations and seized copies of newspapers and printing plates. September 2, 2016 saw the largest ever industrial strike. Crores of workers across the country went on strike, demanding an end to the all-round attack launched by the government against their lives, livelihood and dignity. Representing the interest of the big capitalists, both domestic and foreign, the Modi government has been trying to fool the working people with its false promises, even as it supports and actively imposes a policy that is snatching away jobs, looting family budgets, disarming workers of their rights and opening the doors to a harsher exploitation. Oh! 